Good day. My name is Paul Edwards, and welcome to Inspiration Wednesday. Because my purpose is to uplift those who hear my voice, inspire you in Christ, so that we overcome all the challenges that we face on a daily basis. Life is too short, I realize. This morning I was walking and my knees were spinning me and I said it comes with age. And then the question came to, the thought that came to mind is a, is a statement from my brother called Solomon. And you hear what Solomon said in the book of Ecclesiastes 2, Ecclesiastes 1, verse 2 to 11. He says, vanity of vanities, say the preacher. Vanity of vanity, all is vanity. What does a man gain by all the toil at which he toils under the sun? And you can, you can read the rest of it for yourself, right? Again, my name is Paul Edwards. And the purpose of my program is to assist every man who believes to be saved. The master, Lord Jesus, made a statement when he said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Therefore, if we don't want to be destroyed, we have to become more knowledgeable in the things of Christ. And so my purpose is to inspire so that I might have a positive effect if it's even on one person that you and we, than I, that we might all be strengthened in Christ. But I want to read first a power gem taken from the book Power Gem written by Reginald Crutchley. It says, leadership is the art of unifying the dynamics of diversity. We first lead ourselves and our families. Let us expand and become a dynamic, positive influence in our communities like Christ. That's our goal, to be like him. Again, my program is for the believers. It is written in the book, it says, the Jews seek for a sign so unto to the gospel to the jews is a stumbling block and then it says to the greek in other words to the educated person the men of this world it is foolishness so to, to, to most people the gospel is foolishness when we look at the simplicity of the gospel and you say to someone believe the gospel they're going to tell you it's insanity. Now, what is the gospel? It is that the, the whole world was made by a creator. And the creator, his name is the Lord Jesus Christ, who is a spirit. And he, he robed himself in a body of flesh. And we behold that body of flesh as his son. And he came and dwelt among us for 33 and a half years. He was rejected by his people. We came to the Jews. They received him not. But as many as who believe on him, he has given them the gift of eternal life. After he was rejected, they killed him. He was crucified. He was buried in a tomb. He rose again after the third day. Came and showed himself unto his believers, his disciples. Then he was caught up to glory. He has given us the gift of the Holy Ghost that we who believe shall in time also be caught up to glory. Now that to most people is insanity. But the Lord has taught me, don't argue. Those who the gospel is for will hear. My sheep hear my voice and they will not follow. So the, the day of Solomon wrote the book of Ecclesiastes, and before I even go into that, 
I'm looking at the world today. Right? There is war in Ukraine. Thousands are dying. What are they warring for? Ask yourself that question. There is war in Gaza. What are they warring for? The Jews says that they are going to wipe out Gaza, wipe out Hamas out of Gaza. Hamas is a group, but it's also an ideology that, that speaks about and teaches to its followers the, the hate for all Jews and that the, 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 the country of, of, of Israel should be, should be wiped off of the face of the earth. It's an ideology. How do you wipe out an ideology? Because many of the soldiers are fleeing. Not many are staying and fighting. So wherever they go, the ideology will remain. Then it brings about an issue of where will the displaced people go. Egypt, who is your closest border, not taking them in because there's an economic factor if you're going to take in so much people. The people themselves don't want to leave. Now look at it. The people themselves don't want to leave because they are holding root to the land. This is my land. I don't have to leave my land. Why should I leave my land? Someone said to you, all right, leave this land and come here and live a good land. No, no, why should I leave my land? And then the Israelis are saying the same thing. So they begin to examine life, right? All of us are born as babies. Then we are influenced by our parents. Can I remember, you know, when we were born, we didn't start going to school. Most of us start going to school at six. Five, six. That means for the first six years, whatever we know is from our parents. And then our parents send us to, to prep school and kindergarten. Right? And then after kindergarten, we go to elementary. And then after elementary, we go to high school. And after high school, some of us go to college. And then by the time you quint, you reach 20, 20, and you have kids, you work, you, have, you, have, you have fight to gain what you perceive in your mind, a standard of living. You want to be viewed for, for self-satisfaction. Every person's degree of self-satisfaction is different. So here is a man who is recorded in a book that he was the wealthiest king. He had so much money, power and fame. Not only was he the wealthiest king, it was also recorded that he was the wisest man. That one day a lady, a lady came, a lady came from Ethiopia. And when she came, to Israel and saw the splendor and the grandeur of how he set up the kingdom. She said, oh my God, the half has never yet been told. Right? And he, you know, in analyzing his life, came to a conclusion and wrote the conclusion in the book. He says, vanity to vanity, says the preacher. Vanity to vanity, all is vanity. Because he came to the conclusion that, like I have come to the conclusion, how much money for you will have your belly so that you're not hungry. Here in America, less than $10. Right? Less than $10. He came to the conclusion that I have all of these things. What is the profit? What does it profit? What's the benefit? I'm going to age, I'm going to die. The fear of death has crippled 
many individuals. Look at it. Even in the church, we, we, we preach the gospel and we say that we're going to go to heaven someday. And more, all of us, if we get sick, we try everything to be healed because we still battle and grapple with the fear of death. Are you really? It's only in the, in the Bible where you really hear a saint of God say, well, I am sick. I don't want to be healed. Come, Lord, take me. No. We do everything possible to sustain and maintain our life. And look at the war taking place in, in um, Gaza, or in Ukraine, any which one. Look at, look at your own community that you live, your own country. They are bombing and killing. People are dying. Young, old. Ten years from now, a new set of persons turn up who, who weren't familiar with it. Don't even remember it. Twenty years from now. Can't even relate to it. You are not here. So the question then, what's the benefit? Paul wrote it so well when he said, if only in this life we have hope, we would be men and women most miserable. So our hope has to be in something else. And our hope is that we will live again. Now the Bible teaches not only that we live again, but it teaches that we will live a far more prosperous life. That's what it teaches. So when we analyze life, and I'm learning this now, the Lord that teach me. That's why the Bible said that God is the word. The Bible said that God is the word. And it says life and death is in the power of the tongue. And then he encourages us and says, I beseech you, choose life. And then the Bible also says, faith is nigh thee, it's near you. Where? Even in your mouth. But the challenge we face is that out of the heart comes the issues of life. And the Bible makes a statement where it says the heart is desperately wicked. Who knows it except the spirit of man and the spirit of God? How is the heart revealed? The heart is revealed under pressure. Because when you're under pressure, the true you come out. That's how the true you come out, you know. When you're under pressure. It's easy to say anything when you are not under pressure. But when you are under pressure, the revelation of your heart is revealed. Like the Bible said, true rebuke, Satan was revealed. So it is pressure that reveals the heart. It is pressure that reveals if we, if we have faith. It is pressure that reveals if we have love. It is pressure that reveals if we trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is pressure that does it. When Peter, who was one of the, the, the primary leaders of the church in that time, one day the Lord said to him, Come and let me wash your feet. He said, no, Lord, not my feet. The Lord rebuked him. Get thee behind me, Satan. He said, all right. Don't just wash my feet. Give me a bath. He said, no, no, no. I don't need to be here. When Peter said, he said, Lord, don't go there. Why you go there for? The Lord said, rebuke you. I rebuke you, Satan. You don't know the things of God. Peter was a very strong will person. Right? And Lord said that P 
people are going to forsake him. So no, you have Peter said, no, the whole world forsake him. That means right now there's over 7.8 billion people. And Peter said, do the, the whole 7.8 billion people forsake you. I know forsake you. Now, when they arrested Christ and try him, and Peter realized they were going to kill him, some people said to Peter, you are one of his disciples. So Peter was gripped with fear because the reality of death faced him now. He said, what? If these people know that I'm one of his disciples, they might beat me and crucify me with him. So what did he do? His heart was revealed. He denied. And the pressure of our heart is revealed. He denied it. I have spoken many things out of my own mouth. And under pressure, I may do differently. It's just the mercies of God that has been sustained. Right? So the, the writer came to a conclusion. The question is, is he right? Is he right when he says vanity to vanity, all is vanity? Is he right? Because he's saying everything is in vain. He would be right if we didn't have Jesus Christ. Because when we have Jesus Christ in our lives, then he begins to change how we think and act. And then we be he begins to change our perspective. He begins to change how we view humanity, how we treat each other, which makes life a joyful thing. Hear what my brother Paul wrote to the church in Corinthians. Corinth, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 3. But I fear, least by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, his trickery, so our minds should be corrupt from the simplicity that is in Christ. Many of us as Christians has made the following of Christ to be a complex thing. And we have moved away from the simplicity in Christ. Firstly, it is said in the book of John that God is the word. So the word is spirit. God, I am talking now. You can't see my word. I would have to write it. You can hear it. And when you hear it, it has two effects. It has three effects. A positive or a negative or no effect. So words create emotions. Parents have spoken to kids and their words have destroyed them. Shattered their self-esteem. Husband has spoken to wife. Wife has spoken to husband. Shattered them self-esteem. And in the same breath, they have spoken to each other and have uplifted their self-esteem. And same way parents have spoken to kids and have uplifted their self-esteem. Everything that is created is a word. There's nothing that is made that is not a word. Microphone, house, car, internet, everything is a word. And when the idea was placed into someone by the Spirit of God. And they decided, you know, we can create a car, like Mr. Ford, who created the first car. It was an idea. Then he had to express that idea. So the persons who he told it to, they heard his word. And then it formulated in his minds, and then they draw it out and design it. It is a word. It is the word that is creative. 
That's why the simplicity of Christ, what does Christ say? Let the sick say that I am healed and the rich and the poor say I am rich. So words, when spoken and believed, change your dynamics. Words, when internalized, that's why we have to, what do we have to ask the Lord to do? To change our heart. Because it's the heart that must change. When we believe the Lord Jesus, that means when we believe on his word in our heart, regardless of our situation, that is what we are going to express. And then what it is going to do is to transform us so what we feel inside is going to come out. Because your expression is always what you are feeling internally. A joyful person will always be joyful because internally they are joyful. An optimistic person will always be optimistic. Things will happen many times that will shake our optimism. But then when the word of God stirs up in us, then we rise up. That's the benefit of the gospel. The simplicity of Christ. The simplicity, what did he say? He says, learn of me. So the first step is we have to learn of him. That's why I'm saying we must meditate upon his word day and night. Every day, as a child of God, you hear me. In over the internet, wherever you are right now, every day you have to read the word of God. I cannot tell when last I take up a, a literal Bible. Because the Bible is now and my phones are up, so I play it and I listen to it. I play it and I listen to it. Right? That's what I do. And it encourages me. It is food for my soul. So the gospel is not complicated. When I was in school, and when you were in school, I used to struggle with maths. Struggle. Hate it like poison. And then recently I was doing some courses here with maths. And it still gave me a lot of trouble. But it was easier to conceptualize because my understanding was working. Now my wife, she will just look at the problems and she's a genius. A gift from the Lord Jesus. And through her help I was able to pass these math questions, math subject. But you know what she told me, which I had to adapt. She said, there's only, there's only one way to get good at maths, you know. So you have to practice it. When we're going to high school, we don't want to practice it. We just look at it and say, boy, it's complicated. And then I found out that the more I practice it, after a while, it begins to be easier. I begin to understand it. Still don't like it. Algebra and all of these complex things to me. But I was able to be successful at it. Why? Because I practice it. If you want to learn Spanish, you have to practice it. So all the principles of life, really and truly, is taken from the Bible. Because the Bible says, you meditate upon my word day and night, you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And so it is in business. If you want to be successful in business, you have to meditate upon it day and night. And ideas will come and you will find the right strategy. No. I wrote a book, Keys to the Kingdom of Heaven, right? And 
my goal is to sell over a million copies. That's my goal. No, Facebook have over a billion users. LinkedIn have over 800 million. And when you put in all it, so you can reach almost 5 billion people when you add in all their media. So what is my responsibility? Is to market it and to find the right strategy. How to reach the people. How to present it so it is palatable. So I have to, be, I have to become more knowledgeable. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The Lord Jesus has already give, freely given us all that we need. For when we were born, we weren't born handicapped, most of us. Our eyes, we, we weren't born blind, we never born deaf, we can still walk. So all of us are, is equal at birth. He has given us all that we need. So if you are right now hearing my voice, because I'm closing, I've come to the end of today's presentation. This message with each Wednesday, I present, I do a presentation each Sunday and Wednesday. Doesn't matter. This is the beauty. This is the simplicity of Christ. Here's, a, here's one of the essence. Whatever your situation today, it can change. Because new every day is the mercies of God. It's now at our, in our time, 12.47 p.m. That means within a couple of seconds, that time will pass. You can't bring it back. But what we can do is look forward. Look forward. Trust in what the Lord has already taught you. Trust in Him. To change you. And as you and I change, we change our situation. But how must we do it, he says? He says in everything, give thanks. To give thanks and to come into his presence with thanksgiving means that we have to have a joyful heart. And a joyful heart can only come when we are in true harmony with the Spirit. Because God is the God of hope. And when we know that we have hope, that's where the joy comes from. When we expect that he will fulfill his promises, that's where the joy comes from. So I'm encouraging you this morning, not this morning, I'm encouraging you today, wherever you are. It is not vanity of vanity, no. It is glory to glory. God, the glory of the Lord, the grace of the Lord is our strength. The Lord Jesus Christ be with you. If you hear my voice and you have not been baptized in his name, find an assembly today that will baptize you in his name. Go to the preacher. And do it now. Because today is the day of hope. Now is the appointed time. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow we don't know about. That's why we must rejoice now. Lord bless you. Until we meet again.